that have tried Ceph over the years have often complained that it is hard to set up, maintain, and optimize. In this series, Ceph Easy, we want to show you the current state of things and how easy Ceph has become these days. Today, we will look at the very start of every Ceph journey, the install. For this matter, I have prepared three virtual machines and um, only did the bare minimum. So I installed them with Realm 9. I have set up root accounts and distributed SSH keys so that we can SSH from demo 1 into demo 2 and 3. I've also put the other hosts each, um, into each other's host file so that we can resolve it. Uh, simple things. Uh, that you can you probably have set up in your production environment in you guys um, or that are optional um, in addition to that I have also already set up the repositories that we will need to install everything this is basically only this single repository that you need and it's uh, fairly easy to set up but I don't want to bore you with the uh, details. Every VM is set up the exact same way. So we have one disk for the operating system, and then we have two additional disks, 100 gigabytes each, that we will be adding to the Ceph cluster. Right now, we don't even have the Ceph or the Ceph ADM command installed. So um, we will be starting with that and we'll see how quickly we can set up a Ceph cluster with uh, plot, file, and object services. So first things first, we will install Ceph ADM. I'll keep this video in real time so you can uh, see for yourself. So um, the very first command we need is Ceph ADM Bootstrap. And with Bootstrap, we have tons of options, as you can see here. Um, but most of them are optional arguments. So the only thing we need to supply is the IP address of the first monitor, which is actually, in our case, the uh, local machine. So this will be our first monitor. Um, since we want to use downstream for obvious reasons, we also need the authentication uh, parameters to uh, connect to the downstream registry. So we do have multiple options for doing this, and we will be supplying a file, and that has all the options in it. Um, so Uh, this is my file with my uh, credentials to connect to the downstream IBM repository where I will be able to get the downstream IBM storage set images. Um, as I said, we need the IP address of this machine so we can use it as the first monitor. So when we put it together, it looks like this, Ceph ADM bootstrap. Then we need the first IP address. Uh, the IP address of the first monitor instance, and now registry JSON is the JSON file that um, we use to authenticate against the registry. And that's it. And now Ceph ADM will start and install a Ceph cluster with just one host for now. Um, and it's uh, doing all the setup locally. It has created an FSID to identify this cluster. It verifies a couple of network things. It has now downloaded our downstream image that we'll use to run the Ceph cluster. It's uh, configuring the firewall, for example, and doing a lot of other things. Now the first services are booting up. And um, after that, we can uh, check out the status of our Ceph cluster. There, there won't be much going on, um, but we technically have our first Ceph cluster up and running. So let's wait a little bit more. As I said, I'll, I'll keep this uh, video in real time so you see how, how quickly this actually goes. 
So it's finished. It's uh, printed out a couple of important information for us. So for example, we have the login information for the Ceph dashboard. Um, and we also have the commands to access our Ceph cluster. So if you're running multiple Ceph clusters on the same hardware or VMs, you can very exactly specify this installation that we just did like this. Um, but you can also, uh, if you only have one single cluster like we have right now, you can do this. So um, let's try this, Ceph ADM shell. We can do um, Ceph S for the status. And this would then execute Ceph status for us. Now this is a little bit cumbersome. I don't like it. I'm too lazy to type that much uh, code. So what we can actually do is um, one thing you maybe saw in the installation is that um, they have placed the Ceph kind admin keyring locally. So what we can do is we can install the Ceph common package locally. And by doing that, we will get the local Ceph command. And we can just use uh, the local configuration file and the key ring to just do Ceph S. And now we see, okay, that works. We have uh, one monitor. Uh, it's installed in demo one. Uh, we have one manager. It's active. It's it's all fine, but it's uh, just a monitor and a manager. That's not a lot. So we have zero OSDs, and uh, one monitor is not a lot. So obviously we are in warning status. Where Ceph is basically saying, "What? What are you trying to do? There's no storage here." So um, let's add the other VMs, and then let's add, add the storage. During the installation, Ceph ADM created an SSH key. So now we want to add that key to the other hosts. So first we export it. Now we have the, the public key in our home directory. And now we're just going to use SSH copy ID. And that will place that uh, public key into demo2 and now also into demo three. As I said, I have the um, a local root SSH key pair that enables me to log in with that password, but now we're adding an, an additional key pair that's just used by Ceph ADM to, um, to authenticate with the host. So now from demo one, we Ceph ADM can also do things on the other host, which is important because now we're gonna tell Ceph uh, please add this host, Ceph demo two. And now let's add demo three too. And now we're gonna tell Ceph, um, please use all available devices. So what this will do is um, it will scan all local devices. If they're unused, they will be added to the Ceph cluster automatically. We don't need to, to define which devices to use or not to use. It will see that the OS disk is obviously being used, so that will not be added. And all the other two disks, they will be added. So you see here, um, demo two was already added to the cluster and we're starting to see a couple of OSDs that the Ceph cluster knows about. Um, now we should uh, soon also see demo three added to the cluster, and this should grow to six OSDs because we have two desks per VM and uh, three VMs. But the Ceph cluster is uh, piecing everything together already. We didn't have to tell the other clusters, for example, about our pull secret to pull the images for the downstream. That was all being done by Ceph ADM. It was just those couple of Ceph orchestrate command that we had to do. And now uh, we see demo three is being added. You can see that I'm not lying about real time because uh, you see the time ticking by here uh, on the watch. We have four up OSDs, two are um, starting up. And once they are up, uh, we should be all healthy. All right, uh, five up and six up. 
So our health is okay. Everything is fine. Um, this PG should be activating. Yep, and it's it's done. So now the Ceph cluster is ready for usage. We can do whatever you want. So obviously we want block, file, and object storage services. We don't have anything of that yet. So uh, let's do that. Let's uh, create a CephFS volume. CephFS volume create FS test. We'll just call it FS test. And then also let's create RGW cloud object. So this will create our object storage. Uh, we'll call it cloud object. Again, we watch and uh, it's pretty much done before I can uh, dive into Ceph status. It is creating more pools here. So this number has increased and with the pools, we're getting PGs and they are being rebalanced and uh, it's already over. So uh, now we have CephFast, we have object. Now the thing that we're missing is the block. And that's even easier than all this. So we see the pools that were automatically created by the commands above. And we're missing an RBD pool. So let's do that. OSD pool create. Oh, we call it RBD because it's block. Radius block device uh, is RBD. And now we do pool init RBD to tell Ceph that we want to use that pool for, um, for RBD radius block device purposes. And um, that's pretty much it. We, the video is in for about 10 minutes. That's how fast you can install a Ceph cluster while talking at the same time. You can probably do it a lot quicker if you're just um, copy and pasting these commands and it will just as well work. Um, the cool thing about Ceph ADM and Ceph Orc or orchestration now is that everything is locally containerized and we do have a very good strategic overview. Um, you can do Ceph Orc PS and it will give you an overview of where things are deployed on your different hosts over the whole cluster. And you can see if they're running, if it's everything is fine, where they are deployed, what ports they're exporting. So here, for example, we have the alert manager, part of the monitoring stack. It's running on demo one and it has these ports. Um, so one thing I always forget is what's the port of uh, Grafana? I see Grafana here is running on demo one and it's exposing port 3000. So now I know exactly how to reach Grafana. Um, other things are, for example, the dashboard um, that I constantly forget, um, or the Prometheus, or here you have the Rados gateway. So we have two Rados gateways deployed. Obviously, we don't want to want them on the same node, so they um, so they can uh, be highly available. So Ceph IDM deployed the first one on demo one, the second one on demo two. They're both reachable on port eighty. So now I could use. Um, uh, some kind of um, reverse proxy to add an HTTPS certificate, or we can also later on configure our GW for that. Um, so this is all for today. You can see this, the Ceph cluster is now up and running and ready to serve anything you like. And um, we will continue this series with more interesting uh, videos about the dashboard, for example, or how to maintain the cluster, how to see a failure, how to debug them, and also how to tune a Ceph cluster. Mm -hmm.